What's up guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin and welcome back to another Buyer's Guide video. Today, we're talking jigs. Standard jigs, swim jigs, let's go. Jig Fishing Buyer's Guide. Today we are going to simplify it as much as possible for you. Jig fishing is one of those techniques. It could be power fishing. It could be finesse fishing. So we got some different baits for you. We got some different jig heads, styles of heads, and then we got some of our favorite trailers to pair up with our favorite jigs to help you guys catch more fish. Want me to start off? Yeah, kick us off. Why don't... Uh... Yeah, let's do, let's break it up. Okay. Swim jigs and traditional jigs. Yep. And just kick it off with swim jigs. Why don't you jump into Sounds it? Sounds good. I'll grab these two. All right, swim jigs. So even though we're talking about swim jigs, we put them in the jig buyer's video because they have a special place. A swim jig is a bait that you can throw around and through grass, through uh, flooded timber, wood, but it is a basically... A kind of do all jig right you cast it in there you swim it out we got it paired up with this one's actually a gambler that is the easy but a swim jig has a nice stout weed guard but you can power fish so it's not like a traditional jigs we're going to talk about here shortly but a swim jig is just a, a more subtle approach to a chatter bait spinner, or bait. spinner bait it kind of fits in in line with those types of techniques, but it's more quiet. It's less flashy, but it is powerful. So this guy right here, that's the Dirty Jigs Swim Jig. Again, real stout hook, a nice weed guard. This is something that we throw in the grass, around the grass, down in Florida, here on the TVA, the, the Tennessee River. It is a subtle but powerful combination. You pair that up with your favorite swim bait. We like this guy right here. Like I said, it's quiet and you can catch a lot of fish and really big fish. Again, nice stout hook. You can throw braid to leader and get those fish out of the cover, but that guy right there is a great way to start, a great bait to start with as far as a swim jig. Now for you guys that like to do ultra power fishing, like swim jig on steroids, bunker busting, we got this guy right here. This is the California swim jig this has a no jack hook on there that is a gaff you could gaff some some fish with that thing you're not <laughs> going to bend out that hook what this bait is designed for when you're fishing a lot of times when you're you're you know post spawn right around the spawn you, the grass is just starting to come up or late summer when that grass is just starting to die down you'll see those isolated grass patches mm -hmm. not like the cheese mats but the you know the, the clumps the clumps about the size of the front of this boat you throw this thing right over the top and you just bring this bait through it as it gets hung up on the grass you pop it through it kind of blows out the uh, the grass and those fish just react but having that no jack you can throw it on straight braid if you choose to again real stout weed guard this is the four wheel drive of swim jig fishing okay paired up that is the river to sea that is the d walker so it's, it's a fairly stout stiff plastic but paired up with that bait it has a ton of action and it gets that skirt really pulsating the benefit of the swim jig with that skirt you get that thing kind of puffing when you're popping that rod tip or, or you've popped that rod that that skirt kind of puffs out and then condenses just like a, a, a real life bait fish right you get right. that secondary action those scale flickers but um, the no jack swim jig the swim jig these are great alternatives to throwing a spinner bait or a chatter bait if you guys haven't thrown a swim jig definitely check these guys out. Two more swim jigs for you. So we really are trying to simplify this. This sounds like a lot of swim jigs, except that swim jigs could have been their own buyer's guide. Right. right? We really tried to narrow it down and just include it here. The swim jig is that magical crossover where it's not a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. It's also not like a 4.8 Kitek on just a bare swim bait head. It's that subtle action, it's secondary action, that skirt moving along with a swim bait kicking without all the flash and the vibration, and it just gets bit in more situations. Now, the key to a swim jig is always in the swim bait trailer. 
those specific trailers that Tim just mentioned match those specific swim baits. These two smaller profiles, it's the exact same thing. I'm not suggesting you get this swim jig and then put whatever swim bait on it. We are suggesting this swim jig with this exact swim bait, that swim jig with that <laughs> exact swim bait. And we'll link that stuff down below in the video description. We you. will. In the video description, you know, this is a buyer's guide. It's, it's for you to find the right items for you. It's also for your loved ones around the holidays to find items for the angler in their life. So in the video description, we'll link the exact baits, the trailers, our specific favorite colors for each one of them. But know that with a swim jig, more than any other bait category, the combination of jig and trailer together is everything. You can try 30 different swim baits and that skirt will lay down flat and there will be no secondary action. But you get the right pairing and it turns magical. So this is the Dirty Jigs Compact Swim Jig paired to a 3.5 inch Storm Largo Shad. That combination pulsates almost unlike anything else. That compact pitching jig is a smaller jig. So where we're talking, you know, straight braid or 20 to 25 pound line, now all of a sudden we're talking 12 to 15 pound line. You could throw it on braid to leader or straight fluoro, but you're able to get much more subtle. Then we can take it even a step further. We'll go to missile baits here. This compact little swim jig paired up to the X-Zone 3.5 inch swammer. Specifically, that trailer takes this swim jig and brings it to life. That head is rocking, that skirt is pulsating and that swim jig that swim bait is back there doing its roll and all of that is happening while you're just straight retrieving that's the magic of this category there's no how to work it there's no trick to do the alabama shake while you're reeling it's just throw it out with the right trailer wind it back if you want to pop the rod once in a while great but this thing will have the magic regardless we're going to leave it right there. It's that simple. Now we'll switch over to jigs. To, for jigs, let's talk jigs first. Then we'll talk trailers. You want to kick us off? Sure. If I could have one jig across the country to do it all, it'd be this guy right here. This is the Dirty Jigs. This is the pitching jig. Okay. It's got an Arky style head on it. I'm going to talk about a trailer, but this is on here. This is a uh, River Sea. I mean, that's a Reaction Innovations uh, Sweet Beaver. But uh, we'll, we'll go more in depth in trailers in just a second. But if I could only have one, it's that guy right there. This, with the Arky style head, it does a lot of things good, right? It comes through rock, it comes through mud, it, it kind of puffs up, you can drag, you can hop it, you can fish it off of uh, vertical walls. It's a very universal jig. But again, you have a lot of bottom contact with that Arky style head. Uh, it also skips really, really well around boat docks. So if you're a boat dock fisherman and you love throwing or skipping jigs, that's a cool little jig for you right there. And then going even smaller, the compact pitching jig. Just completely downsized. Good weed guard, lighter wire hook. So if you're throwing heavy line with this guy, you can even do some pitching if you want. Now you can drop down to your 12 pound, 14 pound fluorocarbon, that lighter wire hook, smaller trailer, smaller profile. That's an awesome bait as well. Again, there's that this trend around the country. Everybody's kind of downsizing everything with every, all the pressure and just fishing getting more and more tough. It seems like a lot of techniques you'll see more and more guys are downsizing their baits. Yep. So that, that pitch and jig, that's your all around head. Like Tim said, it does everything well. That doesn't make it the best head in every category, but it does some things, or it's good a at things. a lot of different things. One place where if I'm going to do it specifically, I'm not throwing a pitching jig is grass. When it comes to grass, I want that V style head, that pointed head to help carve that grass and roll it open to allow the jig through. For that, there is no stronger jig on the planet than the no jack flipping jig. 
That hook, again, the same hook that's in a California swim jig, the no jack hook is a gaff. You can stop a passing truck with that thing. <laughs> it's insane how strong it is. And again, in that flipping jig, you get that pointed head shape that really just lays open the cover and allows that jig to come through without catching on it at all. There is no better head shape for flipping in grass. Typically, again, we'll get to trailers, but I like trailers with some action for that. Now, on that same trend of downsizing, for the last couple of years, we've been spending a lot of time throwing the compact flipping jig. So just like the compact pitching jig, the compact flipping jig. So again, that exact same head shape, but with a shorter, lighter wire hook, which is allowing us, you know, there's days where I'm throwing that jig straight 65 pound braid and my flipping stick in the thick stuff, especially if it's flooding, that water's rising, it's chocolate milk. There's nothing more fun than doing that in shallow cover and just getting freight trained. But as soon as that water stabilizes and it starts to clear, the fish are still up in the heavy cover, but that water's getting cleaner. That's when you'll see me go to that compact flip because now, you know, I'm 15 pound line, I'm 17 pound fluoro, still catching fish in that cover, but now I'm not manhandling them out of there. I'm sticking them and then going in and getting them. But I'm able to get the bites because I'm able to go to lighter line and I can still set that smaller hook. So it, again, it's just about where you're fishing. Are you throwing straight braid and crazy cover? You want the full size jig. If that's not your situation, but you're still around a lot of grass, try the compact version and you'll be surprised how many more bites you can get. Now to add some more finesse style jigs for you, maybe you're a, a highland reservoir fisherman or clear water fisherman, cold water. This is typically our cold water jig. Uh, this is the Dirty Jigs Finesse Football. It's got a football style head. Again, it comes through rock extremely well. Mud, it, it adds a lot of fluff as you're as you're popping it yeah. you know as those fish are down there they're rooting around for crawdads uh, that finesse football a lighter wire hook lighter weed guard again now you're throwing your 10 your 12 pound fluorocarbon but a lot of times this time of the year we're just out there dragging we might pop it up just a little bit we have that paired up with a little twin tail grub we'll talk about that here shortly but a finesse football if i'm in clear water or cold water that's when i go with the football jig versus the the pitching jig you guys are truly getting a crash course very quickly in jig fishing right now. The next one up is the finesse jig, not a finesse football, finesse jig. A finesse jig is going to be a round ball head and a finesse cut skirt where they take the upper half of that skirt and cut it short so it puffs up. Again, you've got a compact hook in there, fairly light. This style of jig is what I like to throw around hardcover, right? We'll go out and we'll fish docks. One guy might be throwing a shaky head, but if you're looking for that big bite, the other guy's throwing that compact jig, or that, I'm sorry, that finesse jig, that little compact profile of a crawdad. Uh, and again, you can pair it up with different trailers. We're about to get to that, but typically a chunk style trailer is going to fit that profile better, but it's a one-two replacement for a shaky head. And then last but not least, we're going the ultra finesse. We're going the micro jig. I mean, look at that compared to a normal pitching jig. Completely, I mean, this is a 3 8 ounce also. I mean, this is something you can throw on a spinning rod if you choose to. Ultra light wire hook, light weed guard, but a heavy head. So if you're a smallmouth fisherman or you're a guy that's fishing ultra clear water or highly pressured water, that's when we're going with these little micro jigs. For whatever reason, the last couple years, when we can't get bit on the other jigs, we downsize to these little micro guys. They the just fish bit. just eat them. They have, they're not used to seeing such a tight, compact profile. Uh, just really, really cool jig and it works really, really well. Um, do you mind if I jump into trailers a little bit? Go for it. Well, we tried to keep trailers really simple for you as well. Tim mentioned that dead action on that pitch and jig. Sometimes you want a trailer that's got a lot of movement. Sometimes you want no movement. In other words, you just want profile. Uh, the main bait that we use when we want that profile is just a Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver. It gives you that great craw profile 
but none of that extra movement. Uh, now, some days you do want movement. Typically, warmer water, uh, situations where you're flipping into cover and the bait is falling, and it's so typically shallower where it, it's falling, you're going to want more movement. Situations where you've thrown it out, it's gone to bottom, and you're just moving it along bottom, profile is more important. If we want a lot of movement, one-two punch, the net bait pack a slim is probably my number one. Another one that we spent a ton of time with is the X-Zone Muscle Craw. Very similar profiles, but both baits that have a lot of kick. They're great for flipping and pitching around cover uh, and sometimes just plain swimming them too. Now, a chunk. When we go to some of these slimmer profiles, like the compact pitch and jig, it's easier to put a chunk in there than it is a full size. Here's the finesse jig. Again, there's a chunk inside of there rather than a full size craw. Our favorite chunk, hands down, is that net bait pack a chunk. Now, the pack a chunk comes in, the other one, the full size, that's the pack a slim. But the pack a chunk comes in three sizes. So you've got the little guy, then you've got the standard chunk, and then you got the chunk senior. That's just the size of the claws. Typically, we're using the standard or the senior. And then last but not least, uh, well, actually, there's two more. You've got, for the finesse football, and really for all of our really cold water, cold water. winter yeah. jig fishing. Slow fishing. Yamamoto double tail grub. That just two curly tails. As you throw plastics in water, as the water gets colder, the plastics get more rigid. So even baits that have a lot of kick, when the water gets really cold, they stop kicking. That double tail grub, that material is so thin and so salty, it continues to move. As you drag it along the bottom, it'll ripple even in the coldest water. So cold water fishing, that double tail grub, and then for those micro jigs, again, most of the time that's about profile. And the biggest thing with profile there is getting something small enough that it pairs up properly. The TRD Cross from Z-Man, which is actually a Ned bait. <laughs> but that TRD Cross on those little micro jigs is an awesome profile, perfect pairing. And again, I know we just threw a lot of different things at you at once, but we're gonna link them in the video description, break them out, give you our favorite colors for each. Typically, if a guy just wants to dabble, you get yourself a pitching jig, you throw a beaver on it, you just call it a day. Right? If you want to dabble in swim jigs, get a compact swim jig. Throw a Largo on it. Call it a day. But from there, if you want to get to know the topic, try it in different situations. You've got some different options. Yeah, we gave you a lot right there. A lot of options, a lot of trailers. To really simplify it, if the water's warm, you want a lot of action. If the water's cold, you want dead action or subtle action. Uh, you know, there's something special about a jig bite. When you get your first jig bite and they knock it, I mean, you're going to remember it. It's so much fun when they hit that thing. A lot of times they're hitting that thing hard because they want to kill that crawdad, right? That's what you're imitating and they pound it. Man, it is so that. much fun. And then to pair that up, when you're throwing these, these little micro jigs uh, in clear water, those big smallmouth, big spots, those fish are just, they're, they're just mean. Um, yeah, you want to jump into rods? We'll talk about gear real quick. Yeah, let's do it. I've got this one sitting in front of me. This is a Zodius. This is a 610 medium heavy. Okay. If you're throwing the finesse football, the little finesse jig, or even the micro jig, this is the rod for it. I have it paired up with a little 70 size MGL. Again, you can go straight fluorocarbon if you're in that ultra clear Highland Reservoir cold water deal, or you can go braid to leader. Maybe you're throwing a, a little a finesse jig in the summertime around docks. You can throw braid to mono leader. You know, having that six foot 10 allows you to do little tight flips and pitches. But again, it doesn't matter if you're dragging a micro jig in 30 feet of water or throwing a finesse jig in six feet of water. When they hit it, 
they hit it and fighting them on a six foot ten rod bait caster is a ton of fun. Enough backbone, a backbone to set that hook in deep water to get those fish out away from those docks, and enough tip to feel that bait. You're looking for that rod deflection, right? You're just dragging that bait. If it's cold fishing, you're waiting for that thing to just load up a little bit more than normal, reel down and set. Going high end. This isn't for every jig. So you've got outliers, right? You've got the micro jig on the tiny side. You've got the no jack flipping jig on the other extreme. But everything in the middle, your standard pitch and jig, your compact jigs, even down to the finesse jigs, if you want the ultimate in sensitivity overall feel, this is the G Loomis NRX Plus in the 844C MBR. Now we've talked about this rod in some of the other buyer's guides, but in the IMX Pro line. Obviously you could buy one or the other. You can buy an IMX Pro, you can buy an NRX Plus. You can use it for different things. It's not just a jig rod. This is one of the most universal rods that we own. Those MBR actions can do so many different things. Tim just talked about tip deflection. If you're dragging that thing on bottom and that tip is working, you can see bites faster than you can feel them half the, now granted an nrx plus especially with braid <laughs> short that you're down gonna feel them yeah. but truly it is an amazing rod paired up to a metanium 40 pound suffix 131 braid i mean it's a dream combo it is an ultra high-end combo but it's incredible how sensitive that thing is the first time that i had a fish eat that thing where i thought I would not have caught this fish without this rod was stepping it down rocks, letting it fall down the rocks. And on a slack line, I felt a fish catch it. You cannot feel that on normal gear. You can't feel that on fluoro. You sure can't feel it on mono, but on that NRX plus with braid, it just felt wrong. Something had Different. happened yeah. and I swung and it was a big one. That is literally a bonus fish that I could not have caught in a different situation. Now, last but definitely not least is my actual favorite jig rod of all time. This is from Mega Bass in the Orochi XX line. This is the Brailist. The Brailist is incredible. This is a true bottom contact jig rod. So we're talking the lowest you're going to go is like the compact pitch and jig, but really it shines pitch and jig, flip and jig, swim jig, and you can even throw the no jacks on it if you need to, but it's all about the action. It's the combination of sensitivity, that soft tip for feeling those baits, pulling them on the bottom, and then all that power to crush that hook set, but you also need a soft midsection, particularly with these bigger jig hooks. When you stick those fish, there's a lot of weight, right? Half ounce, five eighths up there. When those big ones come up head shaking and that thing's thrashing, five eighths of an ounce of lead pulling against a jig hook, that's rough. A lot of people will lose those fish when they come up and thrash. But when you can find a rod that flexes perfectly in the mid where it'll stay loaded, so it's not just the tip loaded, you're loaded deep into the rod, even on those big head shakes, that rod never unloads. It always keeps pressure on them and you'll get more of those fish in the boat. Jigs is another one of those categories where you can throw them on a lot of different rods, but the right rods, make a huge difference. Guys, we hope this this helps. You know, swim jigs, if you're a guy that throws underspins or throws Kitex or single, you know, swim baits, we challenge you guys to throw a swim, a swim jig. Having that skirt pulsate, having that secondary action, you can go behind guys, uh, throwing that bait, it's quiet, it S's through, it kind of snakes its way through the grass, through the reeds, the cattails. You can get bit on that when other guys are throwing underspins and you can pick them off behind them. On the flip side, if you haven't tried these little micro jigs, you guys are missing out. Even if you're a true finesse fisherman, you can throw this on a spinning rod, but throwing a jig, you just get bigger bites. Throwing a micro jig, it's a lot of fun and you still get those big bites, but you get a lot of bites 
and it's just that you down catch it, you catch them all it's that downsized package and then everything in between the pitching the flipping there's a lot of jigs there but this covers 12 months out of the year there's a jig in here that will that will catch fish for you no matter where you go and no matter what what month you're fishing all right guys with that we're going to wrap this one up these buyers guides are just continuing to build momentum we are still going seven days a week i hope you guys can keep up with that we are rocking we still have the best videos yet yep. to come. We're st we've still got more bait videos before we even get into the rod and reel combo videos that everybody has been waiting for. We will see you again tomorrow with another buyer's guide for you. I think tomorrow we're talking hover rigs and mid strolling. We're looking forward to it. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.